Here are 15 minutes of advanced tips and tricks for Modern Warfare Zombies. Let's not waste any more time. All right, tip number one. As soon as you spawn in the game, you're probably going to want to take a look at your tack map. The tack map can seem pretty overwhelming with as much detail that it shows. However, if you notice as you scroll backwards, less and less information is actually shown. If you scroll all the way back, only expo locations and other players and the storm will be shown. If you scroll in a little bit further, you could see pack-a-punch locations and all mission contracts. And then a little bit further, you could see all the vehicles, all the aether nests and mercenary camps and all that sort of stuff too, as well as perks. So if you're in that tier three area, you need to know where the nearest exfil is, I always like to start running, open up my tack map, scroll all the way back, and I can see exactly where these exfils are going to be. One of my favorite things in this game has to be death perception. Death perception allows you to see things through walls, including loot crates as well as enemies. This is going to be incredibly helpful as you progress through Modern Warfare Zombies. For example, taking on these aether nests can be really tricky if you don't know where all the spores are. But with death perception, you can go in knowing exactly where where your plan of attack is going to be. Now once you've cleared the Aether Nest, this is the next tip. Every single time you clear an Aether Nest, you are guaranteed one of these large Aether caches. And within these caches is a guaranteed ammo mod. Unfortunately, if you're looking for a specific ammo mod, there is no guaranteed spawn for any specific ammo mod. In terms of what to loot here in Modern Warfare Zombies, it can be kind of overwhelming. But there is some strategy here. I've found that these duffel bags usually have a gun and and some good loot in them, there are various things like fridges and cabinets with high value uh, items that you can sell at buy stations. Registers like this always have essence in them and anything aether infused or these merc caches are always excellent. Now, if you want to pack a punch your weapon, but you want to keep your good looking camo on it, there is a way to do that. All you need to do is melee the pack a punch machine and then pack a punch your weapon and you will retain your regular camo. And the cool thing is this also works with these aether crystals too. You just melee the pack-a-punch machine and then apply the crystal and voila, we still have our base camo. Get some more registers with some essence in them, very nice. If you're starting off on a fresh character, you may only have one armor plate to your name. Luckily, if you go to one of these mercenary camps, there is a guaranteed two plate armor vest. Usually these camps have those counter UAVs like you just saw and you are gonna need to take out, oh, probably don't run into there just like I did. You will need to find these grunts and these mercenaries, but it's not too bad now that they've been nerfed. And as you can see, death perception even works on these guys, being able to see them through cover and stuff like this. See, you can see them. Isn't that cool? Once you've completed and cleared the camp, you can go to the center of it. And in this area next to this terminal, you can see a merc cache that will have a guaranteed two plate armor vest and a mercenary stronghold keycard. Mercenaries are also the best way to get regular gas masks. And if you look at them enough, or if you hunt them enough, you can see some durable gas masks, but those are more rare. This is clearly a big map and moving throughout it can be pretty tedious at times. However, especially in this area of the map where there's so many cranes and buildings, you can utilize these zip lines. Now you'll notice if you try to ascend, there's this little animation that you get stuck into right away. Now, normally that's not that big of a deal, but in tier three, or if you're low on health, that could be the difference between life and death. So in order to skip that animation, all you need to do is jump and then hit your ascend button. So if we jump and ascend, boom, we automatically ascend really quickly. Now, if you're already mid air and you see another zip line you want to ascend, you can slow down and mid flight attack, attach yourself to that zip line and ascend on this building, which also works for horizontal zip lines as well. But what's also really cool is that even though these zip lines, these cranes right here are boxed off, you wouldn't think you wouldn't be able to fit well you can fit right there but even though you think you can't fit here you can like teleport in between these grates and zip line up like this just like that now this area in particular of this map right here the city part here and this map in particular is really special because this is a Modern Warfare 3, an original Modern Warfare 3 map called Overwatch. This also houses the Pack-A-Punch at times, but this has consistently been one of the best areas to loot. There's usually a ton of these crates, a ton of the Merc caches, and even a good handful of the Ethereum infused 
Merc caches. Look at that. There's one of them right here, and that's got death perception in it. Sweet. I'll take that. There's also these weapon lockers over here, which usually has some pretty good weapons. So many of these Merc caches right here. I've got like three, four of them just in this room. Now, there's not a whole bunch of good loot in it this time, but I always try to make... Oh, boom. There you go. There's a self-revive right there. But whenever I'm in the neighborhood, I always just try to stop by and loot what's here because it's usually pretty good. Speaking of good loot, one of my favorite activities has to be infested strongholds. As you can see, with death perception, it's really fun to just come in here and try to attack all of these cysts just like we did with the aether nests. Now these infested strongholds, as you can see, have the highest chance of spawning a mimic, which can be difficult to take out sometimes. But this is also a great place to get a whole bunch of enemy kills here. And as you're going in and out of this, you may notice that your gas mask is getting a little low. Well, if you go find yourself an ammo refill, not only do these refill, well, let me show you, um, let's throw a decoy here. Not only do these refill your ammo, but it also refills your equipment as well as your gas mask. So what I like to do is I like to run in here, kind of find some cysts, shoot a couple cysts, because once you shoot a couple cysts, you'll hear a noise, more enemies will start spawning in. And then when that happens, I like to throw a de decoy to get me some time so I can focus on the cysts a little bit more, get another game plan going, seeing where I'm missing them. And we cleared it. Now, I love the infested strongholds because not only do they give a lot of zombies, but they also give you some pretty half decent loot as well. You can see there's a lot of these aether infused chests right here, which usually have aether tools and some more zombified. Oop, and as you can see, sometimes they can be mimics too so be careful even after you've cleared it in here we've got another monkey bomb and some elemental pop which is nice some of these smaller ones we've got that oh we've got stamina up that's good now we got quick revive in here so wow we got three perks just from this alone death perception is also great for seeing really nice loot chests in an area that you might not have previously traversed and as you can see oh my goodness look at that loot chest that's got a three plate vest a kill streak a self revive and a gold riot shield. That is a fine. So we just cleared an infested stronghold. Now this is a mercenary stronghold. This is going to be something really lucrative for you if you want a three plate vest. We're going to unlock the mercenary stronghold with that key card that we got. And right away, we're going to see one of the most annoying enemies in the game in that shield soldier. You want to shoot him in his feet or his hand as he's shooting you. But as you can see, with death perception, these things become quite trivial. You literally have wall hacks and you can just go right up to these guys and shoot them. Now once you've cleared the stronghold it's all well and good you can look at all the loot that it has within it but usually on the second story you're gonna see this safe. Once you start cracking open the safe, you will have reinforcement mercenaries. So if you have the ray gun case or you found a ray gun, you can just head on up to where you know the helicopter is going to be and the ray gun is excellent at taking out that vehicle. And um, that's it, you've secured that safe pretty darn well. Now, once that safe is unlocked, there is a guaranteed fortress key card and a three plate armor vest. Now, new to season one, now that we have the ray gun equipped as our secondary, if we try to switch to it, we get the pistol fast draw effect. Alongside vehicles and cranes that we used earlier, these redeploy balloons are an excellent way of traversing the map really quickly. But again, we can jump and redeploy without that really unnecessary animation at the beginning. Now, another area that I love to loot whenever I'm in the neighborhood is this area here. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a pretty common area but there is usually quite a bit of loot chests around here. You can see we've got cash registers. We've got this Ethereum infused. Oh, look at that. We've got that in Speed Cola. Very nice. Another duffel bag, some more cash registers, and just a free monkey bomb on the shelf ready for anyone to take. And look at this. This is a really good cash hidden in this truck that you might not have seen without death perception. I wish it had better stuff in it, but you know, the principle's there. And look at that little hidden cash up here. I'm telling you, this is a good spot. Another Another turret circuit. Very nice. Now, if you're looking for some fast cash, these lockers usually have a good chance of getting these rare or green comic books and even some of these purple comic books that you can sell at a buy station for some quick cash. But if you really want quick cash, you're going to be wanting to complete these contract missions. And one of the easiest contracts to complete has to be the cargo contract. Now, you will find some mercenaries hidden in here. They could just shoot through the walls 
and then open up the garage door to get your LTV. Now, when you open the garage door, you don't need to hit this panel. You just need to go up to the actual door itself. And you can see the door with the icon above it is the one with the LTV in it. So that's the one you're gonna wanna choose. When driving in the cargo contracts, it feels as though this was designed so that you had to stay on the main roads because if you stay on the main roads, you get a really easy trip. And by roads, sometimes I mean even train tracks. And if you're brand new, never done a cargo delivery mission, don't worry about the helicopter shooting you, it's not gonna kill you. It can, but if you're driving at all, it won't. And just like that, you just drive into it and you have completed a contract. And look at that, a rare Aether tool. Speaking of Aether tools, one of the best ways to get them is indeed the infested strongholds that we just did earlier. But whenever you see one of these ethereal orbs right here, you just start shooting it. So long as you keep dealing damage to it, it will drop some of these essence containers that you can get some extra points with, but keep shooting it. And 99% of the time, once you defend feed it, it will drop an Aether Tool. Now, usually in Tier 2, it drops a blue Aether Tool. In Tier 1, it drops a green Aether Tool, but it is a little bit random. And in Tier 3, I have found that it drops a purple Aether Tool somewhat more consistently. Now, I'm not going to take the time to loot this area, but this area on the map, this low town area, is also full of crates and stuff to loot too. So if you're in the neighborhood, might as well check it out. Don't be too afraid of driving through the storm, especially at the beginning of the game, because at the beginning of the game, it's not that big. Now around the map, you may find yourself finding these runes. These runes act almost like a telephone where if you know the correct sequence, you can open up a portal and jump in for a thousand points. And these runes will show up on the exit side of their areas with the address right here. Now many people believe that decoys were heavily nerfed in the previous update. However, they still work perfectly fine, especially for solo players in Tier 3. You just throw down a decoy and the zombies will be attracted to the decoy. And it works just like it did in the previous update. You do want to be careful when driving vehicles in Tier 3, because the higher tier of a zombie that it is, the more it will damage your vehicle. In Tier 3, don't worry about killing zombies. You can see I just have a purple pack punch 2 weapon and we're killing zombies just fine. But luckily, we do have enough points for a triple pack a punch, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. That is, until we get critical damage, because tier three zombies really just crush those vehicles. That being said, much like the high rounds of zombies in past games, you do want to mainly train the zombies or run away from the zombies until you are ready to turn around and shoot them. But luckily, we could just fly by in here, get pack a punch tier three. You could see that because we meleeed the pack a punch early in the game all the way at the beginning of the game it still holds true that it's still retaining that original base camo now along with our great ascend trick here skipping that animation i have seen a lot of people and well myself included have a lot of trouble with these zip lines right here these zip lines can be really finicky to get right so the thing that i've done to make them consistent is to jump in them and then hold the interaction button. That has gotten it every single time for me. But we're in tier three, the storm is right around here somewhere. We should probably exfil as soon as possible. So I'm gonna open up my tag max, scroll all the way out, and we can see right up north here, we've got a an exfil that we can do right here. So let's head on over there. We're gonna get this mid flight here, very good. I mean, there might be a chance for one more quick tip here. Let's go ahead, use a decoy grenade to kind of di distract all of these guys. And we could put in these napalm turrets right here to charge up the sentry gun. And this is going to absolutely demolish the abomination here. And just like that, he is dead. Now he gives a great loot, some juggernauts, some three tier armor plates, and that sentry gun is now gonna go to town on all of these guys right here. As you're running away from zombies, tack sprinting and sliding is definitely the way to go, as well as sprinting with a pistol or with your fists out. But to gain some distance, I like to tack sprint, slide, turn around, and that's when I start to shoot at the enemies. And, you know, using your equipment and all that good stuff too. Now, these tier 2 exfils are pretty darn crazy. They have recently been buffed, so now we get a whole bunch of manglers, and in the tier 2 area, we get a whole bunch of disciples as well. So if you ever find yourself like I am, low on armor, low on ammo, 
you just want to kill a whole bunch of zombies because usually they will drop a whole bunch of ammo, a whole bunch of armor, and a lot of good stuff. In addition to that, a small little Easter egg type thing, these Casimirs act like black holes, so if you go and you jump in them, they will actually teleport you a small distance away. Probably not the wisest decision, but it was cool to show ya. I think it's about time. We should probably get out of here, though. Oh, boy, the server's getting a little laggy, too. Let's hope we could do this. All right, as soon as you step on here, if all members of your party are on here, it will immediately count down really quickly, but you still got to survive for a little bit longer here. And hopefully that did it. Okay, good. That's always a little intense. Woohoo! Now, that was nowhere near all of the information and pro tips that I have for you here in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. If you want even more of the best tips that I have for you, be sure to check out this video and stay beautiful.